Hello everyone and welcome back to Thoughts with Sam at Night as I let my very large dogs run before bedtime. So we just got out of church tonight and I was looking at some of the comments that I had to block and remove from people off of the Jesus is Black video. You guys listen, we're all human. We all want to connect with Jesus. We all want to think that he looks like us. And the reason the Bible really doesn't describe what Jesus looked like, that he was just ordinary, is because God did not want to separate us. All right. So the problem with claiming that Jesus is black is it's an extremist movement. It's a movement of people who hate Jews. And does that remind you of anybody? I'll give you a second. You got it, Hitler. All right? So, yes, there was a, a period of time in art in the Renaissance period that artists painted Jesus as blonde hair, pale skin, blue eyes. You know, maybe I'm different, but my parents always taught me the truth of Jesus' Jesus's genealogy. He was Jew. Like it or not, he was Jew. Now, the group, these black extremists that believe that Jesus was black and that African Americans are from the lost tribes, blah, blah, blah. They base it on two things. One, they base it on the fact that in Revelations, it says this. Seriously, you guys, Revelation is basically all symbolic look at this. Now, their second argument is that Mary and Joseph hid Jesus in Egypt. I don't even think they say hid. They try to make it out like Jesus was born in Egypt. Well, then he wouldn't be Jesus because he would not have fulfilled biblical prophecy. Okay. Got to be careful with it. A lot of people are like, well, I don't care. I love my Jesus, whatever color. Yeah, me too. But you have to understand what Satan is trying to do. And that is confused. This is the same playbook he used with Hitler. Anti-Semitic. Jesus is white. Everybody else is wrong. Well, now we have a black sect coming forward doing the same thing. Jesus is black. Anti-Semitic. Everybody else is wrong. And if you can't see the correlation and the danger in that, I'm sorry. Jesus was Jew. He looks like an Arab. He was not Hispanic. He was not African American, nor was he Caucasian. Why did Putin do it? Why did he say what he said? Because he's Putin. Who wants to destroy what country? America. That's right. Everybody gets an A+. Plus. He wants to cause what? confusion, anger, hatred. Yeah, that's what he wants to do. And unfortunately, people are so uneducated in the Bible that they think that they're smart because they get on here and they listen to false prophets and liars with forked tongues and they think they're getting educated because it gives them a, a, a sense of superiority, just like it gave Hitler a sense of superiority to claim that the white race was the master race. Now you got black people claiming it. Seriously, are we going to continue to do this, the world? Really? Shalom. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone because those are the men who I learned the truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahushai. Yahweh is the true name of the God of Israel. Yahweh Shai is who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one and only true name is Yahweh Shai. And um, pretty much as you heard in the intro of the clip, you know, Hebrew Israelites, we could just never be right. You know, the world will never give us our credit you know, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shai. You know, even though we quote the scriptures, we go into the secular history, 
you know we break the precepts down line by line here a little and there a little like it tells you to read the scriptures you know the world is always going to look at us as a hate group you know they're going to look at us as um false prophets all right so without further ado i'm just going to get into the scriptures and let the scriptures speak so this is um galatians 4 and 16 it's going to be a short lesson it says, and my therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth. And here at Great Millstone, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Basham El Shai, we tell you the truth through the Holy Spirit. All right. We tell you to read along with us. We quote the scriptures. We don't add unto the word because why would we do that? We, we fear Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. When you read Revelation 22 verses 18 and 19, it says, if you add unto these words, the Most High is going to add these plagues, which is ultimately destruction to your life and take your name out of the book of life so here at great millstone it's our duty to teach you the truth to get the blood off our hands pursuant to ezekiel the third chapter the lord commanded us to give the world warning from him because we all yahweh bashim yashai's messengers all right but the world is still looks at us as an enemy why because they're in gross darkness you know they've been deceived by the God of this world, which is Satan and his physical counterpart, the so-called white man in sea line, the Edomites. All right. <clears throat> Let's read this. This is Second Corinthians chapter four and verse three through four. It says, but if our gospel be hid, and that's the key thing. This is our gospel. It's the good news that what? That through the blood and sacrifice of Yahweh, the heavenly father Yahweh, he have never forsaken the sea line of Jacob, which is who? The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians that's been scattered through the four corners of the earth. The Lord didn't forsaken us. And through Yahweh Shai, you know, we're going to get another chance under that new covenant. And we're going to rule over our oppressors and be changed to be able to keep the law, statutes, and commandments perfectly. Although we sin against the Lord. It says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Yes, it's hid to two-thirds of the nation of Israel, as well as the world that thinks they're true you know, um, followers of the Messiah. You know, you people that call yourself Christians, all of you are false prophets, all of you are enemies to the cross, and all of you are what the scriptures call antichrists, all right, because you're an unbeliever. You don't believe according to the scriptures. You know, you believe a different gospel. It says, in whom the God of this world, which who's the God of this world? Satan and his physical counterpart, the Edomites, the so-called white man in sea line. And through the Roman Catholic Church and these different Christian denominations and Islam that come from the Roman Catholic Church, the whole world is deceived by the Edomites. Why? Because when they came into rulership, you know, they took down all the dark skin images. But look at the truth that's coming out about the Russian icons, which our apostles, our elders, and even various different other camps, you know, they went into the Renaissance art. You know how the images became known as looking like Edomites, all right? But the world still rejects it. Why? Because they rejected the Lord. No matter how much we tell the truth, the world is just always going to look at Hebrew Israelites as a bunch of liars and as a hate group. It says, verse 4, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, In whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them, two-thirds of the nation of Israel, Israelites that's not a part of the elect ultimately, which believe not least the light of the glorious gospel of Hamashiach, who is the image of the Most High, should shine unto them. So the Most High is not dealing with them. He's not shining unto them because his son is not dealing with them, pursuant to uh, Revelation the third chapter. You know, the Most High's only begotten son, Yahabashai, he has to be supple with your spirit in order for you to get this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So because individuals can't receive Yahabashim Yahashai or his men, then that means that the Lord have rejected them. He's not dealing with them. This is um, St. John 7 and 38. It says, He that believeth on me as the scripture have said. And that's the key thing. Do you believe according to the scriptures? What did Yahweh command all Israelite men to do? You know, to have a street ministry. If you have this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, you've been watching the live streams, you know, you do lessons, you'll be posting scriptures on the, the live stream, comment board, you know, the regular comment board then you're more than an able body to be able to produce fruit. All right? Let me read again. This is St. John 7 and 38. He that believeth for me as the scripture have said. So Christians, they don't believe according as what's written in the scriptures. 
They believe in man-made religions that come from the Roman Catholic Church and the different Christian denominations. You know, although the Bible says one thing, they want to believe in another thing. And when you try to show them, you know, the truth of the scriptures, breaking it down line by line, you know, going into the Hebrew, Greek, and Latin for particular words to get the best understanding of the context of that verse, you know, they still call you a liar. You know, they'll say, oh, you're lying. Why? Because that's not what the God of this world teaches, right? So Christians, they don't believe according to the scriptures. They don't, they don't believe thus save the Lord. It says out of his belly, meaning his mind, because you have to digest this word. And when you digest this word, it's bitter, right? It's sweet as a honeycomb, you know, the future prophecies, you know, being born an Israelite, but it's bitter to go through the curses of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and to bear your cross as a believer, right? But through Yahweh, we will endure to the end, Lord willing. So it says, He that believeth <clears throat> on me, as the scripture have said, right? The Bible, which consists of the Apocrypha, out of his belly, meaning his mind, his spirit, shall flow rivers of living water. And this truth is living water. Because prior to coming into this truth, we was all in the congregation of the dead, you know, keeping the customs and believing in knowing the philosophies of the heathen nations, you know, being blinded by the God of this world, right? You know, believing in the Roman Catholic doctrine, the different Christian denominations, Islam, whatever philosophy or belief system you believed, you know, you was under gross darkness, but now you come into the truth and now you know your true identity. You understand what's going on and you understand how we're going to get out of this situation, you know, through Yahweh Shai, right? Let me see what the next verse is. It says, um, all right, so that's it with that. Now let's go ahead. This is Isaiah 8 and 20. It says to the law and to the testimony, right? Because this is what's in the scriptures, law, statutes, and commandments, secular history, you know, future prophecies, right? So it says to the law and to the testimony, the testimony of who? What the Lord's men wrote in the scriptures that published it, Right? It says to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, because Christians don't speak according to this word. Yes, when you read the scriptures, the Messiah is a so-called black man. The Jews are known for being dark skinned. All right. Going back to the Hebrew word Kordar, which means dark skin. The Jews are known for being dark skin. All right. That's the Lord's nationality. And when we read the scriptures, we break it down. The world still can't receive it. Why? Because they're blinded. It says to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, right? If they don't speak according to what the scriptures say. If the scriptures say one thing, but they're teaching something other than what the scriptures are saying, it is because there is no light in them. And ultimately, who's the light? Yahabashah. So Yahabashah is not dealing with the wisdom of this world. He's not dealing with the Roman Catholic Church. He's not dealing with any of the Christian denominations, Islam included. He's not dealing with no man-made religion. He's dealing with what he left us, which is what? The comforter, which is these scriptures. And only the elect of the nation of Israel will be comforted and understand these scriptures through the Holy Spirit. The scriptures say what? To the pure, all things are pure. Pure in what? In the spirit. All right? So now let's read this. <clears throat> this is 1 John 2 and 18. It says, Little children, it is the last time. And as ye have heard that Antichrist, let's go into this word Antichrist, right? Strong's G500, Antichritas, Antichritas. What does that say? It says the adversary of the Messiah. So another word for Antichrist, as brothers say, you could call them anti-Messiahs, all right? If they don't believe what we teach, because what we teach is in the scriptures, right? Then that means that there's no light in them. You know, if they come in with their own doctrine, they're not saying, thus save the Lord, then they're an adversary of the Messiah. They're an enemy of the cross. And that's what all Christians are. All Christians are enemies to the cross. All right? So it says, you have heard that Antichrist shall come. And it's not just one Antichrist, you know, like how, you know, uh, most Christians break down. You know, it's going to be one Antichrist and... He's going to, you know, usher out the mark of the beast. No, there's plenty of antichrist. An antichrist is just a non-believer, all right? Or a person that believes in different doctrines other than what's written in the scriptures. 
any non-believer or any person, even if they say they believe in the scriptures, but they don't believe what we teach through the Holy Spirit, they're an antichrist. All right. False prophets are antichrist as well. So it says, um, shall come even now are there many antichrists. So there's many antichrists. It's not just one. All right. The scriptures say that um, your foes in Matthew the tenth chapter is going to be day of your own household. They're antichrist. All right. That's to just give you an example. It says um, whereby we know that it is the last time. Yeah, this is the final time. You know, this is the final time period because Yahweh is getting ready to come back, put an end to all his wickedness. All right. This is St. John 14 and 16. It says, and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter. All right. Another comforter referring to what? These scriptures. These scriptures comfort us. This is what Yahweh left us. And we have this understanding through his blood and sacrifice. It says, yep, give you another comforter, which is the Bible, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. So the world can't receive it. You know, obviously you look at the Russian icons. It's clear, it's clear as day that the Messiah looked like a, a so-called um, black man. He would look like a so-called Negro today. No haircut, no shape up speaking zero english not even speaking um greek or latin speaking the ancient paleo hebrew the lashmon kodash right but the world they can't receive that though right they say that we lean upon our own understanding and we try to make the messiah look like us no the bible says what it says that's what you have to you know um base your thesis upon all right that's what you have to base your belief on what's written in the scriptures so a lot of people don't believe was written in the scriptures and they don't even want to read it says um <clears throat> read again um saint john 14 16 and i will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive the world can't receive this no matter what we're always going to be looked at as a hate group we're lying we're the false prophets <laughs> right it says because it see of him not neither know of him but ye know him, the elect of the nation of Israel, know Yahweh Bashim Yashai and his truth. We can't be deceived, right? But the world is deceived. That's why they can't receive us. And if they can't receive us, they can't receive Yahweh and Yahweh Shai or this gospel. And that includes two thirds of the nation of Israel. It says, But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. All right? So what does it tell you in St. John 15? verses 18 through 20 you know if they persecuted the lord and kept his saying then the servant is not greater than the master so the master is yahweh so if they call him the devil how much more is men right and we see how all the disciples died we see how chief men of the lord died they were stoned you know they was rejected by the world they was killed and rejected by their own people this is on um, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 8. It says, He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man. It's not us you despising, but the Most High, who have also given unto us his Holy Spirit. So that's that's the bottom line, you know. We're the prophet to the Lord. We're not here to be accepted by the world. If you can't receive this message that we're preaching unto you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, then more than likely you're not a part of the elect and the Most High is going to destroy you either during Jacob's trouble or with this nuclear destruction that's going to take place for you people that received the mark of the beast which is the RFID chip implant alright so Lord willing you was edified by the lesson Shalom